Okay, you guys, so, sorry for that pause. My stupid piece of junk camera doesn't have a pause because it's a piece of crap. Um, I had to take a break because I thought I made a mistake, but in the end, lucky me, knock on particle board, um, it wasn't a mistake. So, let's continue to draw that. I had 100 written here, and then when I do that, I just had a brain fart and then forgot that I reduced it into a single equivalent resistance. So um, 125 in parallel with 500 is um, 100. So replace that with 100. And um, capacitor, so translating, so translating the capacitor into the S domain is um, its impedance. It's a, the impedance of the capacitor itself, which is 1 over SC. And also the um, initial voltage stored in the capacitor. And then as we found out, that was 75 volts. So it's going to be um, 75 over S to represent the switching that happens. And then the capacitance is 1 over SC, or the impedance of the capacitor is 1 over SC. So 1 over 2 microns is 5 times 10 to the fifth. So this gives me 5 times 10 to the fifth over S. And then here, the inductor translates into the time domain as, um, or into the S domain as the impedance of the inductor plus the initial current or the initial voltage stored in the capacitor. So the impedance is um, LS, and that's giving me 0.01 S ohms. And then the um, initial voltage stored in the capacitor is the initial current times the impedance LI naught. And that gives me, remember we found the current to flow in this direction and it was negative, which means the current really flows in this direction, which means the polarity of the voltage is like that, like such. So that's going to be 1.25 millivolts. And then here, this 137.5. Over S is how independent voltage sources translate from the um, from the S domain or from the time domain into the S domain. So this is our circuit in the S domain, and that's the answer for part A. Now for part B, for part B, we're looking for this the S domain voltage across the capacitor. So it's going to be this plus this. And we're going to use good old Ohm's law, or um, good old mesh currents to solve it. And um, so, mesh says the sum of the voltage drops around a closed loop is zero. So I have some current I sub S, current in the S domain. That's going through there. And this current times this, the 75 initial voltage that's contained in the, oh, well, not times that, because that would be, Give um, me a power term that the initial current plus the um, the volt the initial voltage plus the voltage that comes from this current the S domain current times the capacitor impedance is going to be the total um, voltage across the capacitor that we're looking for. So um, so V out is going to be 75 over S plus whatever this is I S times that. So but let's go ahead and write our KCL or KVL equation. So KVL is going to be, I'm going to start here, negative 75. Let's just start right here. So I have 5 times 10 to the fifth over S times I S plus minus, minus 75 over S plus 100 times I sub S plus 137.5 over S plus 1.25 millivolts or times 10 to the negative 3 um, plus, plus 0.01 S times I sub S is equal to 0. Double check my equation. 5 times 10 to the fifth I sub S over S I sub S minus 75 over S plus 100 I sub S, 137 plus 137.5 over S, plus 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3, 
plus 0.01s times i sub s equals 0. That's what I got. So then bring the constants to the right side and then um, do the math. So I'll give you, I think I had better do this one. Okay, so then let's isolate i sub s. So I have i sub s is equal to, what are my coefficients? 5 times 10 to the fifth over s. Um, plus 100, um, plus that, plus 0 0.015 I, um, S. Okay, so that is equal to 75 over S, so minus 137.5 over S minus 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3. So then here I combined as much as I can, which is the s's all together. And that gave me, and then I divided that term. And then I combined this and this, they have the same common denominator. And that gave me i sub s is equal to negative 62.5 over s minus 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3. That is over 5 times 10 to the 5th over S plus 100 plus 0.01 S. So now we're going to multiply top and bottom by S to get rid of some fractions. On the top is i sub s is equal to negative 62.5, and that cancels out with that s, minus 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3. And then in the bottom, this cancels with that, that gives me 5 times 10 to the fifth plus 100 s plus 0.01 s squared. Okay, so now we're going to get in the habit of getting the s squared into one coefficient because, and the reason is it has to do everything with the way the Laplace transforms in our tables are laid out. It's with a one coefficient for the s squared. And so um, in order to use them to inverse transform, we need a one coefficient. So divide top and bottom by 1.01, 1 over 1, 0 0.01 will give us a um, one coefficient. And I'm using an S here. Now, I'm going to let you do a little bit on your own. Well, actually, not yet, I guess. So then this gives me negative 6250 minus 0 .0, 0 0.125 S. This is over S squared plus 10,000 s plus 5 times 10 to the 7. That's my current. It's negative, so it means that uh, the current, the direction that I was assuming um, really should have, the current was really showing going in that direction. And I just have a habit of always assume, um, using counter, or using clockwise as positive, but this is, the negative is telling me the current really flows in a counterclockwise um, way. So now I know what this is, so I'm going to take the positive direction of the current and say that the V, the S domain, um, the S domain um, voltage across the capacitor is the initial, the initial um, voltage, which is 75 over S, plus the capacitance, the impedance of the capacitor times the current in the positive direction. That's going to be 5 times 10 to the 5th over S. That's the impedance times 62.50 plus 0.125S over S squared plus 10,000S plus 
5 times 10 to the 7. So this is a voltage term, initial voltage. This is capacitance or impedance across the capacitor. This is current across the capacitor or through that mesh. When we do all of that, and my video is going to get way too long if I do it, and I have to assume some level of knowledge about my viewers if you're all the way in chapter 13. I'm going to assume you can find common denominators and bring all those together. You should come up as a check value. Um, and it's easy to make mistakes, but you should come up, and this is your check value. V, S, v out of S is 75 S squared. And this comes just from combining everything into the same common denominator. And then using the C, C solve, which is complex solve um, function on your calculator to factor when there are non-real roots. So 75 S squared plus 8.125 times 10, 10 to the fifth S plus 6.875 times 10 to the ninth over, and you're going to want to in factor form because the very next part you're going to do is a Laplace transform and then, or an inverse Laplace transform. So that factored out is S plus 5,000 plus J, 5,000 plus S plus 5,000 minus J, 5,000. That's the answer to part B. That's the voltage across the capacitor in the S domain. Now, for part C, we're going to use partial fraction expansion on this. Partial fraction expansion says that that can be simplified into, um, or broken up into each of the components of the denominator by some uh, variable or some constants. So it's going to be some A over S, and I'm going to call the next one intentionally K to match up with the Laplace transform table. But this is going to be K over S plus 5,000 minus J 5,000. And I put the minus there on purpose to identically match the Laplace transform table because that, that will be how you get your theta. So lastly, K conjugate, once you have K, you already know K conjugate, so K conjugate times S plus 5,000 minus or plus 5,000 J. All right, so I'm looking for A and K, and by knowing K, I'll automatically know K conjugate. So this is a piece of cake. We know how that will transform into, um, that's just going, well, actually, I stand corrected. So V, A, A is going to be, multiply this whole thing, this here, multiply, evaluate it at S equals to zero, take that S away. So it works because when you multiply both sides by S, you'll solve for A. And then you'll strategically, then this will have an S term, and this will have an S term. You'll set S to zero because it'll magically make that go away, make that go away and give you A equals some number. And when you put S in here, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, You're, you will come up with that A is equal to 137.5, which is that voltage, that independent voltage source. So 137.5 over S. Now you do the same thing. So you're going to multiply both sides, the whole equation, plus this partial fraction expansion term, and you're going to multiply by S plus 5,000 minus 5, 000, J 5,000 strategically to get isolated, um, to isolate K. And then you'll have this 137.5 times this hideous thing, and then you'll have this times this hideous thing, and then up here, this will be gone on the other side of the equation. So to get rid of these terms, these two terms and just get k for itself, you're going to strategically set the this equal to zero. So this is zero, this whole term is equal to zero when s is equal to negative 5,000 plus j 5,000. So we're going to evaluate that when s is equal to negative 5,000 plus j 5,000. By doing that, this will be zero, this will be zero, k will be by itself, and that will be the value of k. And by knowing k, we automatically know k conjugate. 
and k is revealed to be 40. So when you put that in, it's just simply 40. Actually, it's uh, you solve it, it's going to be 40 angle 140. So k then is equal to 40 angle 141.3 degrees. So now we're going to look at different parts of this. So this is 40 angle 141. 41.3, and this will be the conjugate of that. So that's going to be, we don't even care because now we have what we need in order to, um, if you want, you can go back through and put negative, but I, at this point, I have everything that I want because um, now they're not, because they're not asking me to do that and because I'm exceptionally lazy. But if you want to take a conjugate, you could just take the conjugate of 141.3. So, or just plug in, solve in, like just regular. Now, we're going to use table 1213 from the textbook to do part C, which is inverse Laplace transform. It says that when I have something that looks like that, I'm going to match things up. So, that table has this one relationship that we need, or one, this one inverse transform that we need. So the inverse transform says that when k is over s plus alpha minus j beta um, plus some k conjugate, um, s plus alpha plus j beta, so that's why I intentionally put them in that form. My whole thoughts with for that whole time was that I was going to do an inverse Laplace transform. Is going to inverse into the time domain as 2k e to the negative alpha t cosine of beta t plus beta u of t. So now I just need to identify the different parts of that. Oops, nuts. So 40. So the different parts of that is um, k. So the different parts are going to be the k is 40. So the k is um, the 40. And the, that's k. The alpha is 5,000. The beta is 5,000. And the theta is 141.3 degrees. So now, to that is all the pieces. Now it's just a matter of plugging in k is 40. So all the different components into that inverse Laplace transform table. And therefore, once you have all that, you have the answer to part C. And let me put that up so you can check yourself. So the time domain equation for the voltage across the capacitor is V out of T. Once you do the inverse Laplace transform is 137.5 plus um, 80 e to the minus 5,000 t cosine of 5,000 t plus 141.3 degrees. And all that you can say as times u of t, but I prefer to do for time positive. And that's the answer to this, this problem. And um, it was a really good problem. It was painful to do. Um, so I had to skip the algebra, or otherwise my videos would get too long. Um, good luck, and please share, because man, this one was painful.